Thank you especially for joining us here in this spectacular space, this spectacular presidential library, where we are all gathered under the wings of Air Force One. We're going to get right to it tonight because we have a lot of candidates on stage, a lot of issues to talk about, and for the next hour and 45 minutes, give or take, along with my colleague and friend John Harris of the website Politico, we will be putting questions to the eight candidates on stage tonight by agreement. They will have one minute to answer and then 30 seconds for follow-up or rebuttal, as they say, at the moderator's discretion. There will be no opening or closing statements during this debate tonight. With that out of the way, we're going to start with jobs and the economy. The numbers from our new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll this week are candidly jaw-dropping. The country thinks the economy is going to get worse before it gets better. A majority the majority of people in this country now believe the Republican policies of the first eight years of the past decade are responsible for the economic mess we're in. And we should quickly add a majority also don't believe the current Democratic president has set the right policies to fix the fix we're in. Question is really, who can? Uh, Governor Perry, we're going to begin with you. You're the newcomer here on stage. You probably saw this coming a mile away. Uh, you have touted your state's low taxes, the lack of regulation, tough tort reform as the recipe for job growth in the Lone Star State. But Texas ranks last among those who have completed high school. There are only eight other states with more living in poverty. No other state has more working at or below the minimum wage. So is that the kind of answer all Americans are looking for? Actually, what Americans are looking for is someone can get a, this country working again. And we put the model in place in the state of Texas. When you look at what we have done over the last decade, we created one million jobs in the state of Texas. At the same time, America lost two and a half million. So I will suggest to you that Americans are focused on the right issue, and that is who on this stage can get America working, because we know for a fact the resident of the White House cannot. But you know by now the counter argument to that is the number of low wage jobs and the fact that uh, unemployment is better in over half the states of the union than it is right now in Texas. Well, the first part of that comment is uh, incorrect because 95 percent of all the jobs that we've created have been above minimum wage. So I'm proud of what we've done in the state of Texas. And for the White House or anyone else to be criticizing uh, creation of jobs now in America, I think is a little bit hypocritical. You want to create jobs in America, you free the American entrepreneur to do what he or she does, which is risk their capital. And I'll guarantee you the entrepreneur in America, the small businessman and woman, they're looking for a president that will say, we're going to lower the tax burden on you and we're going to lower the regulation impact on you. and. Free Free them to do what they do best, create jobs. Governor Romney, over to you. You've opened the door on this topic, at least where uh, Governor Perry is concerned. Despite your own private sector experience, as you know, Massachusetts ranked only 47th in job creation during your tenure as governor. As for your private sector experience, as uh, Governor Perry's strategy, uh, strategist recently put it, uh, consisted of being, quote, a buyout specialist. Your response to that? Well, not terribly accurate, uh, at least with regards to the latter. And our state, I I'm happy to take a look at the Massachusetts record because when I came in as governor, we were in a real free fall. We were losing jobs every month. We had a budget that was way out of balance. So I came into office, we went to work as a team, and we were able to turn around the job losses. And at the end of four years, we had our unemployment rate down to 4.7%. That's a record I think the president would like to see. As a matter of fact, we created more jobs in Massachusetts than this president has created in the entire country. The policies that will get us working again as a nation are policies I understand having worked in the private sector. Look, if I'd spent my whole life in government, I wouldn't be running for, government, for president right now. My, my experience having started enterprises, having helped other enterprises grow and thrive, is what gives me the experience to put together a plan to help restructure the basis of America's economic foundation so we can create jobs again, good jobs, and compete with anyone in the world. This country has a bright future. Our president doesn't understand how the economy works. I do, because I've lived in it. Time, Governor. Let's get a little bit more specific. Bain Capital, uh, the company uh, you helped to form, among other things, uh, often uh, buys up companies, strips them down, gets them ready 
company resells them at a net job loss to American workers. You know, that, that might be how some people would like to characterize what we did, but in fact, we started businesses at Bank Capital, and when we acquired businesses, in each case, we tried to make them bigger, make them more successful and grow. The idea that somehow you can strip things down and it makes them more valuable is not a real uh, effective uh, investment strategy. We tried to make these businesses more successful. By the way, they didn't all work. But when it was all said and done, we looked at the record we'd had during the years I was there, we added tens of thousands of jobs to the businesses we helped support. That experience, succeeding, failing, competing around the world, is what gives me the capacity to help get this economy going again. Time, I mentioned uh, one more uh, uh, reference to being a career politician. Is it a disqualification to be in government uh, all your career? It's a, it's a fine profession. <laughs> and, uh, and if someone were looking to say, how can we restructure government, and, uh, and which, which agency should report to which other agency, why well, maybe that's the best background. If you're thinking about what it takes to reshape and update America's economy and to allow us to compete with China and other nations around the world, understanding how the economy works fundamentally is a, is a credential I think is critical. Governor Perry, a 30 second rebuttal. You've spent your career in that fine profession of uh, elected office. Your reaction to that? Well, um, Governor Romney left the private sector. He did a great job of creating jobs in the private sector all around the world. Uh, but the fact is, when he moved that experience to government, he had one of the lowest job creation rates in the country. So the fact is, while he had a good private sector record, his public sector record did not match that. As a matter of fact, we created more jobs in the last three months in Texas than he created in four years in Massachusetts. Well, let's widen this out. Uh, and let's bring in uh, Mr. Kane on well, one side let's, and let's wait a second. Sen <laughs> Senator. Uh, uh, go ahead, let's, Mr. I'll, yeah. I'll give you 30 seconds. Yeah, let's wait a second. Oh, we could do this all evening. Yeah, states, are, states are different. Uh, Texas is a great state. Texas has a zero income tax. Texas has a right to work state, a Republican legislature, a Republican Supreme Court. Texas has a lot of oil and gas in the ground. Those are wonderful things. But Governor Perry doesn't believe that he created those things. If, if he tried to say that, why well, be like Al Gore saying he invented the internet? Look, the, the, the reality is there are differences. There are differences between states. I came into a state that was in real trouble. Huge budget gap, losing jobs every month. We turned it around. Three out of four years, we had unemployment rate below the national average. We ended up with 4.7% unemployment rate. I'm proud of what we were able to do in a tough situation. Time, Governor Perry. I know back and forth, but Michael Dukakis created jobs three times faster than you did, Mitt. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, George Bush and his predecessor created jobs at a faster rate than you did, Governor. That's, that's not correct. Yeah, well, that is correct. correct. Nice to see um, everybody came prepared uh, for tonight's conversation. As I said, I'd like to uh, bring in uh, both wings here, uh, figuratively, of course, uh, Senator Santorum and Mr. Kane. Let's talk about this debate between uh, public sector life's work and private sector life's work. You've spent your life's work, Mr. Kane, in the, in the private sector, and Senator Santorum, most of yours in the public sector. Uh, weigh in on, on, on what you're hearing. Yeah, I think what people are looking for is someone to get something done. And that's what I have a track record of doing in Washington, D.C., on across the board, not just on economics, but on moral cultural issues, on national security issues, national defense, you know, national defense issues. I've done things. We brought de Democrats and Republicans together. I've, I've put forward a plan because I think it's the best plan, but it's also the best plan of anybody here that actually can pass the Senate, which is probably going to have, have to have Democratic votes. And what I focused on was a sector of the economy that can get Democratic votes. We cut the corporate tax from 35% to zero because we want to build the great middle of America again. Get those jobs that were shipped overseas by companies that were looking to make a profit because they couldn't any longer do it here and bring those jobs back to America. We cut that corporate rate to zero. We, we pass repatriation to get that resources that are sitting overseas, $1.2 trillion, and we bring them back here. We'll create jobs and I'll get Democratic votes to pass it. We'll bring things together because of those industrial straight de Democrats, and I know because I'm from an industrial straight state, they will vote for this bill. You want to get something going, elect someone who knows how to get things done. Time, Senator. Mr. Cain, same question. Let's cut to the chase. This is what business people do and politicians don't do. Here's how I would fix this economy. First, eliminate the current tax code. It is a drain on entrepreneurs. It's the biggest barrier that's holding this economy back. And the, what I would do is to propose a bold plan, which I've already released. I call it my 999 economic growth plan. Throw out the current tax code, a 9% tax on corporate income, a 9% tax on personal income, 
income and a 9% national sales tax. If 10% is good enough for God, 9% ought to be good enough for the federal government. This would replace all federal income taxes. It will replace all federal income taxes. It will also replace the payroll tax, so everybody gets some skin in the game, and it replaces the capital gains tax. This economy is on life support. We do not need a solution that just trims around the edges. This is a bold plan and a bold solution. Additionally, with something as simple as 999, it gives us an easy mechanism to go after those, help those cities that are the most blighted in terms of empowerment zones and we can modify that very easily versus the current code. Mr. Kane, thank you. Governor Huntsman, uh, as you know, Governor Romney's new economic plan calls for the U.S. government to officially label China a currency manipulator. Uh, but the Wall Street Journal editorial page says such a move would cause a trade war, perhaps. You're a former ambassador to China. You have served four U.S. presidents. In your view, what does Governor Romney not get about China? He doesn't get the part that what will fix the U.S.-China relationship, realistically, is fixing our core right here at home. Because our core is weak and it is broken. And we have no leverage at the negotiating table. And I'd have to say, Mitt, now is not the time in a recession to enter a trade war. Ronald Reagan flew this plane. I was in China during the trip in 1984. He went on TV and he spoke to the Chinese people. I'd love to do that too in Chinese itself. And he talked in optimistic glowing terms and it reminds me about this, Brian. We are the most blue sky optimistic people on earth. We're gonna find solutions. And I have uh, an offer for the two great governors over here. And I hate to rain on the parade of the great Lone Star governor, but as governor of Utah, we were the number one job creator in this country during my years of serving. That was 5.9% when you were creating jobs at 4.9%. And to my good friend Mitt, 47th just ain't gonna cut it, my friend. Not when you can be first. We've gotta remember that to beat President Obama, we have to have somebody who's been in the private sector, understands the fragility of the free market system, has been a successful governor as it relates to job creation, and knows something about this world. I've lived overseas four times. I've been an ambassador for my country three times. I think I understand that. Governor Huntsman, time. Congresswoman Bachman, over to you. Uh, of all uh, of you uh, on this stage, you've been very vocal about um, uh, wanting less regulation in American life. Um, uh, which current federal regulations have uh, been prohibitive or damaging in terms of uh, your own uh, small business? Well, I think without a doubt, there's two that you look to. First of all are the new regulations that have, are just being put into place with Obamacare. As I go across the country and speak to small business people, men and women, they tell me that Obamacare is leading them to not create jobs. I spent three weekends going to restaurants, and I talked to a business owner who said, I have 60 people on my payroll. I have to let 10 go. At the same time, a 17-year-old girl came in and said, I'd like a job application for the summer. He said, I'm sorry, dear, I'm not hiring this summer. I'm actually letting people go. Obamacare is killing jobs. We know that from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, but I know it firsthand from speaking to people. We see it this summer. There are 47% of African-American youth that are currently without jobs, 36% of Hispanic youth. I'm a mom. I've raised five biological kids and 23 foster kids in my home. One thing I know is that kids need jobs. And Obamacare is clearly leading to job-killing regulations, not job-creating regulations. Congresswoman, thank you. Over to Congressman Paul. You're known as the absolutist uh, in, in the bunch, uh, someone who has consistently opposed uh, federal government from having uh, any role, uh, and I think by your definition, Definition that isn't explicitly laid out in the Constitution. Uh, so uh, this makes people curious. Is there a line with you? Where do you draw it? Does this include things like uh, uh, making cars safe, making medicines safe, air traffic control, controlling the jets above our heads?